The subtitle to my talk this morning is Jesus, Friend of the Children. <clears throat> I, I'm not going to stand up there. We're a small group, and this morning I'd really like to have more of an interaction, interactive discussion here on the subject. Tom read the scripture reading for you, and I'm going to uh, reread it from Matthew 19, um, just the 14th verse. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Now, uh, Mark puts a little different and added note in here on the same event. And this is how it reads. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And then he adds, Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. So my question this morning is, what is so special about children? What attributes do we see in children that attracted Jesus' love and appreciation? That's the subject of our, of our discussion this morning. I'd like to know from you how old uh, you were when you first knew or learned that Jesus loves you. Doug? Six. Very, very early on. And did that come from home or did it come from? Okay. Okay. Back here. Four or five. Four or five. Okay. And? Five. Good. Good. Way back here. Okay. Right here on the front. Uh -huh. Were you a child? Is there anybody here that, that didn't know Jesus until fairly late in life? Anybody? What about back here? How old, how old were you when you turned, learned about Jesus' love? Three or four, okay. And mama, reach way back and tell me when, when you learned of Jesus' love. Kindergarten. Okay. All right. Six. Jeff? Okay, good, good, good. It's a good addition. Frank? Okay. Six? Okay. Okay. Good. Seven. Okay. I can't remember. Uh, Carol, you had 13. Okay. Can you expand on that a little bit? How did that come about? Okay. <laughs> okay. Tom, when was, when was your... Okay. Uh, growing up in seven. Uh, but the experience that really came on later in life. Mm -hmm. so. I, think, I think most of us will share that experience uh, as well. Um, I can't remember a time when I didn't know Jesus loved me because my mother 
worship for us at home was mom sitting there and reading uh, Arthur Maxwell's Bible stories over and over and over again. I've probably been through them uh, with at mom's knee and during family worships, I'd say eight, ten times during my young life. <clears throat> I was very privileged to... Um, to live on a dairy farm up in northern Pennsylvania. I was born in Tacoma Park, Maryland, so I started out a city kid. And uh, when I was a year and 10 months old, my first brother came along. And approximately a year after that, dad decided that he did not want to raise his boys in the city. So he bought a farm in northern Pennsylvania, and it was 200 acres of hill and forest. And uh, I was privileged to have the run of those 200 plus acres and knew them intimately well. And I was able to, in that way, learn of God's second book, the book of creation, and uh, as I said, there was never a time when I didn't know that Jesus loved me and that he uh, gave himself for me. Um, and like most of you, um, my knowledge expanded with experience. And uh, I gave my testimony last time I was here, about a year ago. Uh, my life hung in the balance. And, uh, and that basically changed my life because I had a very real demonstration of, of God's care, Jesus' care uh, uh, of me personally on a, on a very personal level. But uh, Jesus... Um, in the... Uh, in the 19th chapter, or 18th chapter of Matthew, he expands on this, and he is, uh, the setting is he's been uh, talking uh, with the Pharisees, and now the disciples draw uh, apart, and they ask him this question, who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus' answer was this, he called a little, chi a little child to him and sat him down in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children. Now, mind you, yeah, observe, unless you become converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, and it goes on, therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. So there must be something, some um, attribute or attributes in God's mind that endear the childlike uh, behavior to God. And I looked up uh, in the in, uh, in Professor Google and, and I asked the question, what are the attributes, the desirable attributes of a child? And I got a list of 20 or so. So uh, we're going to talk about some of them, perhaps more than others. Um, interestingly, there is one of the Ten Commandments that specifically addresses children. Now, I was a child. All of us were a child at one, one point or another. And as we grew up, we considered ourselves other than children, but essentially we're all children. We all have parents. 
And, and God put it right there in the Ten Commandments and said, honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Um, so what does it mean to honor Chase? What? Chance, chance. I'm sorry, chance? Uh huh. Very good. Very good. Yeah. We often think of um, of of this commandment, and and we think, uh, okay, just just obey your parents, right? Isn't that most of your understanding? And and that's part of it. But um, honoring your parents means that you, as Chase said, respect them. Chase, chance, sorry, chance. Take a chance. Take a chance. Yeah. <clears throat> um, if you respect your parents, um, it means that you uh, keep them in in some form of awe. And if all else, if all else is equal, then you grow up believing and doing what your parents have, have advised you to do. Um, that doesn't always happen, unfortunately. And, and sometimes it probably shouldn't. But uh, the, first, the first virtue of childhood that I want to talk about is the virtue of innocence. When a child is born, a child is born not knowing evil. Now, you know, you can say, well, yeah, but we're all born in sin, right? Um, and, and that's true. But a child is born with, a, with an inherent trust and honesty that is incredible. In fact, a child's honesty is sometimes a nightmare <laughs> to <laughs> to the parent. Um, they they really tell the truth. I mean, when you ask a child a question, you're going to get the truth. And the pity of it is that children learn dishonesty or lying. From other people. Their natural inclination is to tell the truth, but they learn from adults that it's sometimes not sometimes to their advantage not to tell the truth or even to tell a lie, okay? Um, and I think that Jesus, when he said, lest you become as children or become converted and be as little children um, that, that there's a special place in the heart of Jesus for, for a child that does not know evil. Okay? Now, um, you can say that a child learns to be deceitful and and even sometimes to be evil, but where do they get it? Yeah. Now, um, where do we get you and I, not not children, people who were children, but where do we get the inclination to be loving and honest? Does it come from within? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. If there's anything inherently good in me or in you, it didn't come from here. It came from God. And that came from uh, Genesis 3.15. When God chose, you know, Adam and Eve, our first parents, um, 
sold themselves basically to the devil. And when they did so, they became helplessly enslaved to Satan. In fact, the spirit of prophecy tells us that if it had not been for Genesis 3.15, if it had not been for that seed of enmity that God placed back in his creation's heart, their inclination would be only to evil. And it steadily became so to the point that even God repented of his creation and chose to destroy them and start over. So the element here that I want to stress is that children are born only with that seed of enmity. What they do with it depends on you and me. And unfortunately, sometimes we don't give them the right impressions, do we? Um, children would naturally like to do right, but they learn all too quickly that it's not to their advantage to do so because people, people do them wrong, abuse them, um, and they learn very quickly um, that doing right is not always to their, their, to their advantage. Uh, one of the virtues that, uh, that popped up right at the head of the list here was curiosity. You know, you know children are curious. I mean, insanely curious sometimes. Uh, you know, they, you know you, you've seen children just dropping something on the floor to see what happens. You know, will dad pick it up? <clears throat> but it's that curiosity that sparks a pattern of learning. Learning right and wrong, uh, and so on. And can you imagine a child who has no curiosity, who has no interest in learning? Uh, it's, it's a kind of a pitiful thing. Curiosity. Uh, and I know that we've we've seen depictions of of Jesus and the children in the in the media and movies and whatnot. And and I know that Jesus was intrigued by the curiosity of children, and he played to it. And we can do the same thing: uh, treasure their curiosity and lead it in a direction that will will enhance their life and not spoil it. Have you, ever have you ever thought of children as being humble? No, some children aren't, okay? But as a rule, children have a humility that's inspiring. Um, I think of one story in particular. Um, a, a little girl had a brother who needed a blood transfusion. You've probably heard this. And uh, it turns out that the little girl had the exact same blood type as her little brother. And it was explained to her that, that she could save his life if she, if she would give him some of, his, some of her blood. And... Uh, So the procedure was established and the blood started to flow and the little girl uh, patiently uh, went with the procedure and, and about halfway through it, she said, when is it gonna happen? And they, they were puzzled, when is it gonna happen? She, you know, she had the idea that that she was giving up her life for her little brother. Now that is humility. Of course, it was quickly explained that uh, the, the small amount of blood that she would give to her brother wouldn't cost her her life, but 
the fact of the matter is that she was willing to give all for her brother. That's the kind of humility that Jesus treasures, not only in just children, but in you and me. Uh, what about the compassion of children? Um, have you ever seen a child fuss over a sick animal or a, or a wounded bird? Or Isn't it inspiring how sorrowful and compassionate they are when attending to uh, a sick or injured animal? Um, unfortunately, life teaches us to be callous sometimes. And... Uh, Certainly, we see in the media a tendency to, to, to be hardened and calloused about the loss of life or injuries and so on. And the, the, uh, the media is just full of violence, and we think nothing of it. But for a child, violence initially is offensive and alarming and... Uh, and I'm sure that that the the heart of Christ is is endeared to a child who reaches out in compassion to to those who are less fortunate or um, or hurt or hurting. Children can be very courageous. The last example was uh, was a, a an example of that. Um, Children can be very courageous when it comes to uh, life-saving um, studies, and, and you know they they want to do something, help this person, and uh, ch children tend to be uh, grateful. If you, but it's but grateful or gratitude is something that they learn. Um, it's not. I don't. I don't personally. I don't believe, and you may you may know of uh, examples that that dispute this. But children are not naturally grateful. They have to be taught to say thank you and to be gracious and to send thank you notes to people who send give them gifts and so on. But when they catch on, children are the most grateful people. Much more grateful than. Than adults. When when we become adults, we do those things out of obligation. You know, you know, you sh it's something you should do, not what you necessarily want to do. And uh, not so with children. When children learn the, the the attribute of gratitude, it comes from their heart. And uh, and I know that God must uh, treasure that. Honesty. We, we, we touched on it. <laughs> we touched on it a little bit, but um, I believe that children are naturally uh, born honest, uh, and you know it goes along with truth telling and so on. They don't. You know, and again, children don't learn dishonesty on their own. They learn it from observation. And that means they learn it from you and me. And that's unfortunate, very unfortunate. Uh, on the list is uh, optimism. I'm not sure that, that all children are, are born op optimistic. I think that uh, sometimes children are wired like their parents to be somewhat pessimistic. Um, Patience. Okay, I'm gonna go go with chance here. Are you a patient child? <laughs> <laughs> he answered the question without words. <laughs> you know, patient, you know, patience is not what I would consider to be a, a childish attribute. Um, some children are infinitely patient. But mostly, pe children want what they want when they want it. Isn't that right, Chance? That's right. 
What about, uh, what about creativity? Children can be just, just amazingly creative in their play. Uh, we, we take care of our, our three grandchildren who live in the area, and, and it amazes me the depth of their creativeness. And, uh, you know, they get it honestly. And I'm not talking about from their parents. I'm talking about from their creator. You know, God, is, God is creative, yes. infinitely creative, and he built it into us to be so as well because we were created in his image. Um, hopeful. Have you ever considered a child to be hopeful? I think so. Um, and, and, I, and again, I think it's one of those things that, uh, that they learn. That, you know, a child who doesn't learn to be hopeful probably will die of their own hand. Uh, a child who doesn't learn to be hopeful will probably be extremely depressed and take their own life at some point. Hopefulness is, is, is faith in action. Um, when, when we learn to be hopeful and, and the Holy Spirit teaches us to be hopeful. We have, we, we say we, we live in the, in, the, in the great hope of, of the resurrection. And when we learn that, how could you be depressed? When, you know, no matter what happens to you in your life, there's always hope beyond what we find on this earth. So, Children are resilient. Amen. Have, you, have you noticed that? I mean, a lot can happen to children and they just bounce, bounce right back. Um, they're resourceful. They're respectful if you teach them to be respectful. And they're empathetic. It goes along with uh, compassionate. Um, in fact, I believe that empathy is another thing is another virtue that is learned by experience. Um, and, uh, and children who are empathetic grow up to be very helpful children to their brother, brothers and sisters and to their neighbors and so on. Because when you can put yourself in someone else's shoes, when you can reach out to someone with sympathy, empathy, which is a deeper form of sympathy, understand how that person might be feeling, um, then you become an extreme value to humanity. And Jesus knows that. So, This is what it all boils down to. Uh, in, in the book of Isaiah, uh, and starting with the sixth verse of Isaiah 8, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. That's heaven, folks. That's what it's going to be like. And then it says, and a little child shall lead them. And folks, if you study little children, you know what that means. You know what it's like to watch a child who has compassion, who has empathy, who has a natural love for others and so on. Uh, you know why Jesus was truly a friend of children. It's because they demonstrate 
these values that Jesus so treasures and wants to see in our hearts. So lest ye become as children, be converted. It can happen. You know, whatever your upbringing might, might have been, and if you were not fortunate enough to have parents who taught you to be innocent, honest, loving, kind, and so on, God can step into your life and change that, and you can become converted to be as little children and dear to the heart of God. Father in heaven, thank you for giving us that seed, that seed of return to you and, re and of eschewing evil. And I pray, Lord, that you will give us the heart of children who are honest and compassionate and loving and kind. <clears throat> May we be in your sight as little children and inherit the kingdom you have prepared for us. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.